to show you how to make a face mask with yarn ties in three different styles with a single tie to the back of the head, with two short ties that can tie behind your ears, or with two long ties that can tie behind your head. So in the past, I made a tutorial similar to this with fabric ties on the sides. Now this is a great way to make a face mask. It's really durable, it will last a long time. Um, it's great if you want to donate places, um, which is awesome. Um, however, the little thin ties can be difficult to sew for beginning sewers and it is time consuming. So I was searching for a way to take my regular face mask pattern and make it a little bit more accessible. So I had just finished my ragdoll tutorial and I had yarn everywhere. So I was like, why not have yarn ties? Um, at first I was a little bit concerned. I wasn't sure that it would be durable enough, but they seem to hold really snugly um, in the corners of the face mask, which is great. And these two, I have actually already run through the washer and dryer. I put them in a lingerie bag and washed and dried them both, and they came out much better than expected. One thing to take note of if you do decide to do yarn ties is some people may be really sensitive to the texture of the yarn. So if you think the feel of the yarn may bother you behind your ear or behind your neck, you might want to choose uh, something different such as elastic or a fabric tie. Um, similarly, um, when you are making your yarn ties, I would recommend choosing a soft yarn just for comfort. So that said, let's get started. First, you need to cut out two fabric rectangles for your face mask. I'm making the teen adult size from my face mask pattern. These are nine by six and a half inch rectangles. You can visit my website for different sizes if you're interested. So you need one rectangle for the outside of the mask and one rectangle for the inside. I do recommend two different colors if possible. That way you can tell which is the inside of the mask. I'm using one piece of cotton and one piece of flannel, but you can have two cotton pieces if you prefer. Let's start by making the mask that has two long ties to go around your neck. So these ties would go around your neck and behind your head. So you want to cut four pieces of yarn. Um, these strips are about 18 inches in length. When you have your yarn cut, you want to tie a knot at the end of each piece. Doesn't have to be perfectly located anywhere for this one, just near the end. So I have a knot there in that end, and I'm going to repeat for the other end of this same cut. So now I have an 18 inch piece of yarn that has two knots on either end. And I'm gonna repeat this for all four pieces. I now have knots on the ends of all four pieces of yarn. And the reason for this is a couple reasons. Of One is to prevent fraying. So when you actually wear the mask or when you wash it, uh, you don't want these to unravel totally. So putting a knot at the end will prevent unraveling from the end of the tie. Also, where it attaches to the mask, it's a lot harder for a knot to slip through the stitches that are sewn rather than just the frayed ends of the yarn itself. So to help make it a little bit more sturdy on the places where we're gonna sew the ties, we want the knot there as well. Take the rectangle that you're going to use for the outside of your mask and place one of your ties at the end. You want the knot to be right at the edge of the fabric. So it's kind of difficult to see, but there's my knot right there. I'm gonna set my knot right at the edge of the fabric, and I'm gonna place my yarn about 3 eighths of an inch away from the corner. And I'm gonna pin this in place. And then I'm gonna place the rest of the yarn 
in the center of the rectangle so that when I sew, it's out of my way. And I'm going to repeat this process for all four corners. Once you have all four pieces of yarn pinned in place, take your inside rectangle and place it on top of the other and pin again. make the mask that has the single tie at the back of the head, you need your two rectangles, exterior and interior rectangles. And you also need four pieces of yarn. I have cut two pieces of yarn that are approximately 10 inches long and two pieces that are approximately 15 inches long. Let's start with the smaller pieces of yarn. Like before, you're going to tie a knot near the end. So at one end, tie a knot. So I have the knot at one end of my yarn. Now I want a knot that's seven inches away from this. So I'm going to grab my ruler and I have my knot right here. I would like another knot to be seven inches away from that. So I'm gonna pinch the yarn with my fingers seven inches away. And I'm gonna loop the fabric. I'm gonna keep these fingers here so I know that's where I want my knot to be. And I'm gonna loop the other end and kind of slide the knot towards my fingers. And then when I pull, I now have knots that are approximately seven inches apart. They don't have to be perfect, uh, but the closer you can get, the better. And then I'm gonna trim this end off so that about a half an inch of yarn extends from that. and let's apply it to the mask. Lay the exterior of the mask right side up and just as before, we're going to pin the yarn in place with the knot at the edge, 3 8 of an inch away from the corner. So here's 3 8 of an inch. My knot's at the edge of the fabric. I'm gonna pin this in place. Now what's different this time from the previous masks is that you're gonna take the end of the same piece and use it in the other corner. So again, I'm gonna lay this down 3 8 of an inch from this corner and pin in place. Repeat on the other side. Make sure the edges are outside of your seam allowance. Take the piece that's gonna be the inside of the mask and place it right side down on top of the others. Pin as before. And we're gonna sew around the outside edge with a quarter inch seam allowance, leaving an opening in the bottom to turn. All of the 
masks are going to be sewn together using the same method, leaving an opening at the bottom with a quarter inch seam allowance. So go ahead and start sewing. Make sure you backstitch. Now when you get to the corner, put your needle down, lift your foot up, and turn. And when I'm sewing over the yarn, I really want it to stay in place. So I'm going to sew over the yarn, back stitch back over the yarn, and then keep going forward. Now that you've sewn around your mask, you're going to clip the corners. You don't need to clip the yarn. If it sticks out a half inch or so, that's just fine. Like I mentioned before, we don't want the yarn unraveling and sliding through our stitches, so keeping a bit long um, is, is just fine. Let's go ahead and turn our mask right side out. So this is the same for all three masks, so whichever you selected, Go ahead and flip it. When pressing your mask, make sure it's been fully turned with the seams all the way out at the edges and make sure your opening is turned under so that it looks like it has been sewn and press avoiding the yarn as much as possible. The next step is the same for all three masks. Turn your mask so that you're looking at the wrong side and fold it in half. Press I've found it's helpful to use a good amount of steam then open up the mask and take the bottom edge and fold it to your center line. Repeat for the top edge. Take care not to burn yourself. And watch out for the ties. We're now going to create our pleats. Pinch the fold and bring that fold up towards the ties. The fold kind of lays nicely up near the top edge. It usually stops about a half inch from the top and clip it in place. Take your next fold and do the same. Now you want the next fold to line up with your previous one, but not overlap it. And we'll do the same with the third. So you'll get a series of folds that line up together. Do this for both sides. Once you've clipped in your folds in place, they should line up nicely. You can kind of feel the fabric and how it lays together well. Make sure it feels nice and smooth. Press again. 
take care not to press your clips. Now we're gonna take this back to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch all the way around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you've decided to make the mask with the single tie in the back, your mask should now look like this. And remember, we still have two pieces of yarn left. So grab your two longer pieces of yarn and tie a knot at one end of each piece. The end that I did not tie a knot in, I'm going to attach to this loop here. So I'm going to take my piece of yarn and I'm going to put it through this loop and I'm going to tie a knot. And this time, instead of a single knot, I'm going to do a double knot because I do want this to be strong and I don't want it to come undone. So there is our single tie to go to the back of the head. Let's repeat on the other side. And there you have it. The advantage to this type of mask is that these ties do slide here so it can adjust based on how you wear it. Also, it's less likely that the yarn will irritate your ears or neck because it won't be as uh, resting on it as much. If you made the mask with the two small ties on the end to go over your ears, it's time to size this for you. So um, it's nice at this step if you have someone to help you who can help you tie it behind your ears. Um, if you don't, you can tie a bow on one side at the, bow, the placement you think would be right for you. and then put it on that one side, um, adjust as needed, and tie the other side. Um, remember on all of these masks, we are using yarn. Um, because it is yarn, you want to tie it in place with bows. So when you tie this behind your ear, use a bow. When you tie it behind your head, use a bow. Um, if you end up with a knot, it's possible that you might not be able to get it undone and you might need to cut it to remove the mask, which we wouldn't want to have to do. So make sure you use bows when you attach it to wear the masks. But once you've got this adjusted to your size with bows on the ends to go behind your ears, these bows can stay in place and then the mask is easy to slip on and off. We now have masks in three different styles. One long tie to wrap behind the head two long ties to go behind your neck and head, and two short ties to wrap behind your ears. Remember, tie all of them in bows, and these are great options for your masks. Fabric ties would still be recommended for durability for the long term or if you were donating to charities, but if you just need something quick to wear when you run to the gas station, post office, or out to your mailbox, yarn ties are a great option. Just like my fabric tie face masks, the yarn tie face masks fold up great to fit inside the keychain carrying case. You simply fold the mask into thirds, slip it into the pocket, and flip it over. And you have a keychain pouch for your face mask. So see the link below if you're interested in that tutorial.